What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The King of Do Show. I'm joined by my co-host, the one and only King. King, what's good, my brother? What's good, brother? Let's get it. Listen, man, so we don't do these too often, right? But every now and then you get one of those interviews that's just a gem. Tayshawn Prince recently went on the Knuckleheads podcast, which is hosted by Darius Miles and Quentin Richardson, Q Rich who both played for the Clippers together, I think in the early 2000s. But they had Tayshaun Prince on recently, about a week ago, and they covered a lot of topics that a lot of Pistons fans will be interested in, myself included, which is why I kind of wanted to react to this together with you guys. King, anything you wanted to tackle before we get into this, bro? Um, Just want to say, man, I, I love this type of content. You know, it's a lot of things behind the scenes that we don't see as fans, and you get to hear what the experience is like for these dudes, man, because, you know, what we think it is, is totally different. It's totally different from the draft right. process to being in the league to getting cut or traded from a team. It's it's a whole lot, man. So yeah, uh, this was a good interview. I think y'all gonna enjoy this. This whole interview is about an hour long, but we're gonna focus on the Pistons content. He starts talking about Larry Brown after his Kentucky days. So King, take it away. Did you actually work out for the Pistons? <laughs> yeah, I worked out for Detroit on a Friday. Worked out in Detroit on Friday. Didn't have a great workout. Right. You know what I'm saying? It was just okay. But I think the thing they wanted to see was just me compete. They wasn't really uh, looking for me to have a great workout. Mm -hmm. It was more just getting me in there, getting to know me as a person. They watched me for four years. Yeah, They're not gonna sit here and judge me off if I have a great workout when they yeah. watch me for four years. So I think it was more just getting to know who I am and just put me through some little tests and see how I do with that. And mm -hmm. uh, once I got out of that workout, that's interesting. I, I had a pretty good inclination I was going there if somebody didn't draft me before that. So that first part was interesting, bro. I wanted to comment on that real quick. He said that basically the front office, when they were looking at him, when he was working out with them, they were looking more so at his mentality and his work ethic, not really his ability because they watched him in college. He went to UK for four years. So right. that tells me that Joe D at the time, he, he already had Chauncey on the team. He already had Rip on the team. He already had Ben on the team. Like he already had veteran guys on the team. So he was probably looking for somebody who could match their mentality, somebody who was mature, who could just blend right in. They ain't got to teach him. They ain't got to make sure he's doing what he's supposed to be doing. Off the, like they wanted somebody who was mentally mature. I thought that was really interesting that he said that. Yeah, maturity, man, play the right way. We wonder why those personalities fit together so tightly. You know what I'm saying? Like glove, man, because it's just a certain type of personality that Joe Dumars was looking for, which yeah. if you really think about it, it was his type of personality. Exactly. Him and, him and the bad boys, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. It's their type of personality. So yeah. they knew and you, what type of guys to go and get. I'm glad you said that, bro, as far as Joe D. That's a great point because Joe D, um, when he went to McNeese State in college, he was a top 10 scorer all time in college, right? But he came to a Pistons team. He wasn't the guy. He was a guy, but he wasn't the guy. It was Isaiah. So Jody had the maturity to say, okay, I'm on a different situation now. And I think the same thing applied to Tayshawn. Because Tayshawn was a guy, if you go look up his film at uh, University of Kentucky, man, it's a game where he hit five straight threes in a row to open the game. Five straight threes in a row to open the game. The last three we hit from was the logo. He went five for five. So he was a guy who in college was that dude. But he had the mentality, just like Jody did, when I get to this different level, it may be a little bit different for me. I got to be mature about the situation and just play my role. Like right. that's I look at stuff. That's why I like watching this kind of stuff because you hear conversations about things that really give you a deeper understanding as to why these guys were picked where they were. Yeah. At that time, Rick, Rick was heavy on vets. Yeah, like, yeah. Don't play rookies. You you sit there, you learn, you gain experience, knowledge. And the good thing about Rick is he tell you that. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. you get some of these coaches, man. Don't they say just do this, do this, do this, so and then you're working hard as hell. You're working hard, you man. You're like, no okay, where my shot? <laughs> they ain't talking to you. Yeah, yeah. Like Rick Brown, right. I'm just I'm left here, here, right? Larry Brown is a Hall of Fame coach. I, I love Larry Brown, but he's a, he's a, a unique person. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I, I would say that. W would you say that, Q? To put yeah. it lightly. No, I got yeah. Man, listen, Coach Brown ain't gonna bullshit. He gonna goddamn tell you where the hell it is, and he <laughs> you know gonna do what right. he it, it, he he old school. You yeah, gonna yeah, for he sure. gonna coach you, and you gonna receive the coaching, or you not. And if you not, you ain't gonna be here a player. Yeah, that's yeah. just he old school. I respected the shit out of Coach, and once we understood each other, I got love for Coach to this day, and I feel like he got love for me yeah, to, love to this Larry day. Brown. Like he's one of the 
Like I like, like you say, I like yeah. when somebody shoots straight with me. Don't tell me this and then it's that. Like as long as you tell me this, I can deal with. It. I'm a big boy, but like I respect it, coach, because he shot straight. Yeah, yeah. I want to pause about it. it again real quick, man, because talk about it. They said just what they talking about with Larry Brown, you know, and you know it's not that it's not too many coaches like that in the league right now. So you got Rick Carlisle, mm -hmm. and probably a couple of other couple of coaches, you know, a handful, yeah. right? Yeah. And then you look at. You know some of the guys that we've had in the ranks of stan van gundy you know he mm -hmm. wasn't a guy i mean yeah he yelled and screamed but he was a guy going in press conferences talking about what players ain't doing and stuff like that right you know larry brown he got you straight in practice yeah. off the court wherever it was he was gonna tell you what it was man and yeah. he, as a player you appreciate that more than anything yes make you play harder for a guy like that man don't go and talk behind my back you know what i'm saying tell me what i'm doing wrong so i can try to fix it you know what i'm saying tell me yeah. what i need to do so i can go and do it right yep. yeah 100 yep. percent. and i think it's, it's funny you say that because rasheed just talked about that rasheed wallace just talked about that on his podcast he said doc rivers did the same thing to him he said there was an understanding that he was going to play a certain way and after the game after a game was over because he said he would always call his wife after the game just to check in she said, you know, Doc is talking talking about you right now in his press because he couldn't see. He's in the locker room and Doc is you know, doing his interview. He, she said, Doc is talking about you right now, saying you he don't know why he's taking so many threes and you need to get, you know, get down the post. And he's, he's like, what? So uh, another example of what you just what you just said, as far as that communication not being there, not honestly not being there, even with Doc Rivers, it wasn't there when he when she played over there in Boston. So, you know, like you said, players really respect and appreciate that because once their role is defined and they know what they're supposed to be doing, that's how they can get it and stay on the basketball court and really be successful. Absolutely not. You get Larry Brown, but then you start seeing the, cha the change in the team. Mm -hmm. They start building, bringing guys in, John C, you know, all the way down to y'all finally get she. Right. We thought Melo was going to be Detroit pick, but they wind up going with Darko. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Like and they build this veteran team with you being well, you're not a young guy because you did four years right, of right, college, right. but you're the young guy of them right. that that that's playing. How was that to see the team forming and building them vets around and 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 the y'all competing at a high level that y'all wasn't competing just years before, well a year before? Man. Yeah, so it kind of still took place from the last year of Carlisle where you know we went to the conference finals. Mm -hmm. We got swept by Jersey. Front office got a chance to see what was needed on that next roster. Mm -hmm. But then also, you know, was Carlisle the right guy for the team? Yeah. Right? And so once they chose Larry and that fit came about, the front office thought it was a match made in heaven because obviously they knew who we were yeah. and they knew what he was about. So once we got him and, you know, started to go through training camp and go through the experience, mm -hmm. we kind of figured it was a match because, you know, obviously we know Larry's super disciplined to your point, tell you how it is. Like you can't sh sugar, you can't like sh shortcut anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you know how he approached things and how he did things with us. Like it didn't phase us. Right. Like we were all strong minded guys. I got a, I got a we question. Had a veteran group. Like you said, I was a young guy. Obviously Rip was a young guy too at the time. He's Rip couple, not to not to cut him off. I'm just thinking, bro. Larry Brown replaced Rick Carlisle, right? After Rick Carlisle took us to the Eastern Conference Finals. And we know the immediate success that Larry Brown had with us for those two years that he was here. We went to the finals both years. We won the first year, right? Mm -hmm. In the immediate scope, it looked like it was the right move. I just want to throw this at you. Right. Look at what Rick Carlisle has done in his career since then. He's won a championship with Dallas. He beat LeBron, my goat, to do it. He's always in the mix. He's getting his team to the playoffs. He's been successful with different teams. Do you think the Pistons would have had more success if they would have just stuck with him as opposed to having Larry Brown for two years? Looking back from 2001, if we just stuck with him, do you think we would have had more success over the long term? What do you think? So this is this situation is a little bit different because, you know, you see similar situations like what happened with Golden State. Mark Jackson built the team up and Kerr took over. Well, this right. situation, yeah. I'm even both ways because the creed that both coaches live by. Yeah. Both coaches demanded you to play the right way. Yeah. And with the roster that was put together, I still think they would have been successful, to be honest, because 
like I said, the mentalities, they're too similar. Mm-hmm. They're too similar. And like I said, when it comes to playoffs and, you know, going for championships, obviously we have two winners that we're talking about. Right. And those two winners got it done the, the exact same way. So I think either way it goes. Either way? Okay. Yeah. Pistons probably gotcha. will still won. Because it's crazy because the things that they're, that they're mentioning about Lay Brown, about he was, he was a straight shooter. He also said about Rick Carlisle. You know what I mean? So we might just, we might have won more championships because that's what I'm thinking. Rick Carlisle probably wouldn't had you know Tayshawn doing what he was doing in 2005 in the and, finals, and, which we'll get to. Finals. Yeah, Garden Tim Duncan and, and, and Rasheed <laughs> would have been wandering off double team in Ginobili, which we'll get yeah. to. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a good, it's a good what if, right? Right, because I mean, just look at what Carlisle has done, man. I mean, he he was successful here two back to back 51 seasons, right? Um, conference finals the last year. He went to Indiana immediately and became our biggest threat. Immediately, you know, right. who knows what would have happened if, if Malice of the Palace didn't happen, if those suspensions yeah. didn't take Jermaine O'Neal, Ryan Artest, um, Stephen Jackson, Tinsley. If it didn't take all those guys out, what would happen that year in 05? Would that have been a conversation of the Spurs in Indiana? We don't know. It's just like so he was successful even there. He went to Dallas, successful there. Indiana again, successful again. So everywhere he's been, he's been successful. So it just makes me wonder, like, what would have, what could have been, had we just kind of stuck with him? Because it wasn't like he was tanking or he was getting worse. You know what right. I mean? The team was still getting better.